Hey there, welcome to the James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Coming up on Monday, an astronomical event, which won't be repeated in North America for another 20 years. There will not be another total solar eclipse anywhere on this giant swath of land we call North America. And I know for my hometown, which is just a little bit east of here in East Texas, uh, we're not going to be in the path of totality for uh, at least until past the year 3000. So this is a pretty rare, significant event. And I'm told, I'm skeptical, but I'm told it's going to bring in billions into the economy of anyone who happens to be in the path of totality. And my next guest can break that down for me. Lisa Miller. She's uh, author of the new book called The Business of Joy, but also just published a blog on the economics of the eclipse. That number sounds kind of high to me, Lisa. Where's all this coming from? Well, uh, thanks for having me on. And I actually, with all of the buzz and hype about it, I do consumer research. So I'm one of those people that collects data to really understand the story under the story. But when I ask the consumers, like, how many people are going to you know, live in the areas, how many people are going to travel, it's, it's big numbers. I mean, basically, 32 million to 36 million basically live in the path of, the, of this eclipse. And then another, you know, up to 12 million people are going to either be driving, flying, getting in their RVs, going camping, and just, you know, traveling to actually see the eclipse. So when you add it all up, it actually it actually could be well over a billion dollars easily um, when you think about how many what people are spending. So one skepticism, point of skepticism I have, not with your breakdown, but any of these breakdowns, you know, like when you host a Super Bowl or you host the Olympics or you host some event is that, yeah, a lot of this money that will be spent on this event would have otherwise been spent in a similar recreational activity that wasn't associated with this event. So really you're just shifting where the money is circulating and not actually adding anything new to it. Well, what's interesting is that's a great point. I love that. And if you think about, I always talk about the Taylor Swift concert, right? It's kind of a a paradigm buster, right? And we know that people shelled out, you know, hundreds of dollars for these um, activities and they traveled. And to some degree, you may be right in the sense that, you know, people are going out less frequently, but splurging when they do. But I think at the end of the day, it's still going to be a net positive because um, people are craving these social connections. Um, I've been studying joy since the beginning of the pandemic, and people are just wanting to create moments and memories. And so they are kind of splurging on these opportunities with friends and family. Do you have uh, a guess on the, like the average amount of spending one of these eclipse seekers will be d- doling out? Well, I do. I did ask that question. So what I did is I asked them different types of activities. So are you going to a hotel or, you know, these different types of things. So most of Americans that live in the path, they're going to just spend, you know, maybe $50 or less. And it might be a t-shirt and a pair of glasses, right? Because those are like the must-haves. But then you add on top of it, I might grab a bite to eat while I'm out and about. And we know that restaurants have been really struggling. So, you know, the average person could end up spending, you know, anywhere, you know, $100, $150. But when you add in the people that are getting on a plane, um, you know, a percentage of Americans are actually going to spend several hundred dollars. And let me just give you one example, because I'm in Dallas as well. And so south of south of Dallas, um, they're going to have a music festival for the watching, you know, solar eclipse watching party just to get into a campground, three hundred and fifty dollars just to get in. And that's like pop your own tent up. (laughs) And so the amount of people, the amount of um, the amount that is being spent you know, is, is a lot. By comparison, 2017, people on average spend about a couple hundred dollars on the event in 2017, just as a frame of reference. Yeah. Well, millions of people doing the exact same thing is going to have some sort of economic reverberation any, uh, any way, but Hey, congrats. I saw you got quoted on uh, Fox news and Fox business for this uh, survey. So good on you bringing some attention to a, a Texas firm there. Yay, I'm a native Texan, so I'm doing my part. (laughs) When you're not studying the eclipse, what else does Lisa W. Miller and Associates do? 
Well, what I do is I publish this book about the business of joy. And the whole premise was back in March of 2020, when joy was greater than fear, the economic recovery could begin. So what I'm trying to help companies across, you know, the you know, the U.S. is how do we bring joy back to experiences, whether it's that restaurants, movie theaters, and just kind of flip the switch back on to connecting and, you know, building those connections with consumers in our families. You know, we've kind of forgot, we've lost our social skills a little bit. So I do consumer research is what I do, and I love it. All right. That's Lisa Miller. Thank you for your time. LWM-associates.com. Thanks for your time on The James Show. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Uh, let me take a uh, squeeze in a quick call right here. James and Rockwall, if you can make it under a minute, I'd like to hear uh, your thoughts on what we were talking about before. Yes, I just wanted to re- rebuke what uh, your previous caller said about, you know, the swap from the Republicans made to the Democrats and all that stuff. There's no historical context to that whatsoever that I've ever read. I've I've been steeped in this. But the main point I wanted to say, he was talking about the flags. Like, you see a bunch of Confederate flags and Republican things and, and all these other things. Well, I wanted to say, well, the one flag that you don't see at Democratic conventions are the American flag. Um, you see the BLM flags, you see the trans flags, you see the Ukraine flags, you see the Palestinian flags, but you never really see an American flag flying at any type of Democratic convention. Right. No, right. And, and the only thing that evolved isn't the Republicans' uh, stance on slavery. It's not like the Republicans all of a sudden say, hey, we're pro-slavery. You know, the the interpretation of that flag had evolved since the civil war to where when i was a kid the rebel flag that was on the general lee and that's what tom petty had behind his stage you know a a staunch democrat activist and and liberal had behind the stage it just became to represent the south and not necessarily not necessarily hey we need to make black people work without compensation against their will i mean who the heck supports that name one person that supports that on either side of the aisle. It's, it's a ridiculous, ridiculous argument. Thank you very much on The James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3.